A tired stay-at-home mom was told by her husband that all the chores in the house were her responsibility and not his. She posted to the parenting subreddit where she admitted that her husband was not at all sympathetic and refused to help out with any household tasks. She explained that her husband works 10 to 12 hour days while she is a stay-at-home mom to their two small children. Some days she is so exhausted from wrangling the kids that she doesn't have the chores done when he gets home from work. And he told her that all of the responsibilities were hers, including making sure dinner was on the table and making sure that he has clean clothes from work as well as taking care of the kids. He argued that since she was home all day, her job was taking care of the house and the kids regardless of feeling tired. She can't help but wonder if he's right. People on Reddit agreed that her husband should be helping out with the house as well as the children. Being a stay-at-home mom isn't easy and often comes with serious mental repercussions. With a poll finding that stay-at-home moms experience sadness, depression, anger, and stress at higher levels than working moms. And this woman, she's in a partnership with her husband. She's not a hired nanny or maid. In a partnership, both people should be working equally. They both work during the day without the help of their partner, but when the husband gets home from work, he should be trying to take the load off of his wife's shoulders, not adding to it. Women with tattoos are seen as sexy, confident, and powerful. And here are several reasons why women with tattoos make the best wives. She wears her heart on her sleeve. She is completely comfortable and open with her emotions, and she wants to share in your feelings too. She is comfortable in her own skin. She is comfortable with who she is and never feels like she needs to change herself to fit in a mold. She cherishes memories and wants to make new ones with you. There's a reason why she wanted certain tattoos to have as a memory of something that held significant in her life. She finds joy in the little things. Her small tattoos bring her happiness when she looks at them. She also notices the little things her partner does for her and she appreciates them greatly. She's always up for a little bit of fun. Women with tattoos love some spontaneity in their lives. She is always up for adventure and ready to take some risks. She's a force of nature. Women with tattoos are strong and confident. She's willing to fight for what she believes in and for her relationship. She's truly one in a million. She embraces her individuality. In fact, she lives for it. She lives her life however she wants and doesn't care what other people think. It will be practically impossible to find another one like her. Are you the most well-liked sibling in your family? Well, according to research, your parents do have a favorite. A 2017 study by Brigham Young University School of Family Life looked at the way that parents treat their children. They studied nearly 300 families that have at least two teenagers, and they found that the youngest sibling is most likely to be everyone's favorite sibling. This study was all about perception. If the youngest answered that they believed themselves to be the favorite, it showed they had a better relationship with their parents, in turn, making them the favorite. According to another study, the youngest sibling is also perceived to be the most fun and outgoing. This is because parents aren't as harsh on the youngest, so they tend to have a more laid back attitude and the ability to be more social. So if your parents say they don't have a favorite, they're probably lying. And if you're the youngest in the family, try to use your powers for good. Are you wondering if you found the one? Here are four comforting signs that you found your forever soulmate. One, you have shared values. You may not agree about everything, but you will be on the same page about the most important things in your lives. Your lives will flow well together because you have shared morals and values about how you each choose to live your life. Two, you have shared dreams and life goals. You probably don't have your entire life planned out yet, but you have an idea of your immediate future and how your lives will work together. It's important to know if you're together on the same path. A great question to ask is what do you dream about doing in the future? Three, you both have integrity. Integrity means someone is honest, ethical, trustworthy, and has a truly strong moral compass. When relationships are founded on integrity, it's a good sign that you and your person are meant to be together forever. Four, you just like each other, plain and simple. Like, not love. Do you get along well? It may not sound romantic, but when you truly like someone, it doesn't fade with time. In addition, to being partners, your best friends, and have a deep respect for each other. If you're looking for close friends, 
Find people who hate the same things you do. According to research, we tend to bond more quickly with those who dislike the same people as us. And we connect quicker over shared dislikes rather than likes. This may seem counterintuitive as most people try to see the good in others and aim to be seen in a positive light. But the study found that we weigh negative impressions of a stranger more heavily than positive impressions of them. Gossip is also a valuable social tool and negative gossip lays the foundation for closer friendships. Negative gossip creates the sense that there's an in-group and an out-group. The people sharing the gossip feel like they are part of each other's in-groups, which means that they feel closer to one another. Gossip serves to bring people closer and, as the study revealed, everyone loves a hater. So the next time you find yourself hate bonding with someone, just know that you might be on your way to making a new best friend. Did you know that kissing makes you healthier? Here are some science-backed ways that kissing is good for your health. Kissing prevents cavities. Saliva helps build tooth enamel and washes bacteria off your teeth, which in turn helps break down plaque. Kissing burns calories. It's not going to replace a workout at the gym, but one minute of passionate kissing can burn anywhere between two to five calories. Kissing strengthens your immune system. Research suggests that kissing is actually an evolutionary adaptation to protect against cytomegalovirus. It also improves your resistance to having an allergic reaction. Kissing lowers your stress levels. Sensuality is proven to keep us relaxed. So prioritize smooching your partner every day. Kissing reduces blood pressure. Research shows that kissing dilates your blood vessels and therefore helps reduce blood pressure. Kissing relieves pain. Kissing releases feel-good chemicals in the body and these endorphins have been proven to be even more powerful than morphine to relieve pain. Kissing gives your brain and body a boost of happy chemicals. Kissing stimulates the release of oxytocin, endorphins, and dopamine which all mix together as a cocktail for health. When are you supposed to say I love you for the first time in a relationship? Some researchers in the UK set out to answer this question. They asked 1,000 men and women how long they wait to drop the L word in a relationship for the first time. Over half of the survey's respondents said that they prefer to wait at least three months before saying I love you for the first time. The study also broke things down by gender, revealing that one third of women would have no problem saying I love you within the first one to three months of a relationship. But the real eye opener? Men are twice as likely as women to declare their love after just one week. The truth is, though, there's no such thing as a right time. The right time is when it feels right for you. You set the rules, trust your gut, and understand that a huge part of being in love is taking that leap. What's the best age to get married if you don't want to get divorced? A divorce attorney named Tyler Summers chimed in on TikTok, stating that there are actually best and worst ages to get married if you want your marriage to last. The worst age? any time in your 20s. Summers encouraged people to wait at least until the age of 30 to tie the knot. By 30, people tend to be settled a little bit more in their lives and are ready for a long-term relationship. And research backs him up. Back in 2016, sociological researcher Nicholas Wolfinger discovered that, after crunching the numbers, the sweet spot for getting married is between ages 28 and 32. Divorce rates are 50% for those who marry at age 20, and they go down up until that 28 to 32 window. And after 32, divorce rates start going back up. But at the end of the day, life is unpredictable and there will always be exceptions to every rule. If you're married, how old were you when you tied the knot? If you listen to one of these three bands, it's a dating deal breaker, according to research. A 2011 survey by people meeting site TasteBuds that matches people according to musical taste found several musical artists to be major turnoffs. The top three, Nickelback, Justin Bieber, and Lady Gaga. Honorable mentions include U2, Creed, and Coldplay. Granted, this survey is a bit older, so there are likely new artists that would top this list if it were to come out today. Is music taste a relationship deal breaker for you? Which artists are your dating deal breakers? Mm -hmm.